Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be taking a look at the strongest pure humans in the new world. This means we won't be looking at the godkin from the slain theocracy, as their strength is well beyond human limits due to the fact that they hold the blood of the six gods. We also won't go into massive detail about the black scripture generally, as I want to go into more detail about them in a future video, but they will however be mentioned when appropriate. As for Azif Indra, the only reason he is strong is because of the mech suit from Yggdrasil, but otherwise he is on par with an Orichalcum rank adventurer. With the mech suit equipped, he is on par with the Pleiades, potentially nearing 70s in terms of level due to the suit's ability to cast 10th tier magic, but as this is more of the suit's ability than Azif's, he shan't be included on the list. The weakest human on this list is actually Gazif Stronov, Despite being the king's personal guard before his passing, Gazif was only level 26 to 30, and just shy of the realm of heroes. A lot of his strength came from the fact that he had all five of the kingdom's treasures, and the ring that he got from Regret could further boost his warrior abilities. The author even confirmed that the Clementine we saw fight Momon is stronger than Gazif without the treasures, and Clementine with her black scripture gear is stronger than Gazif even with the kingdom's treasure. That said, as Clementine was no longer part of the Black Scripture when we saw her, and Gazif wielded the treasures as the King's Guard, he narrowly beats Clementine on this list, despite Clementine being in the realm of heroes, and Gazif not. So how strong are these treasures, considering they push Gazif ahead of Clementine? The most well known is Razor's Edge, a sword that is enchanted and capable of cutting through armour like paper. The ability to bypass defense even allows it to bypass Eins' low level weapon immunity, and this is why Razor's Edge is capable of killing him. Eins also believes the sword is capable of breaking a world item. Next we have the Guardian Armor that is forged from Adamantite and enchanted to deflect death magic up to a certain level. We saw in Gaz's fight with Eins that it couldn't deflect true death and it wouldn't be able to deflect Grasp Heart either. The Amulet of Immortality provides regeneration and healing to the wearer, while the Gauntlets of Endurance provide infinite stamina. The fifth treasure, however, remains unknown. In terms of martial arts, Gazif has access to both fourfold and sixfold slash of light, which deals four and six slashes to an enemy in a single strike respectively. Sixfold slash of light cannot be directed, however, making it most effective against groups of enemies. He also has martial arts such as body strengthening and flow acceleration, which we saw Clementine use to boost her attack and movement speed. Gazif can also strengthen his weapon through focus battle aura, which pours his fighting spirit into the weapon. While Gazif is strong, a lot of his power comes from his equipment. Another human who has a strong weapon to push their capabilities even further is Remedios Custodia. Remedios's claim to fame is that she is the most beloved of all the characters in the whole of Overlord. Kill this thing! Are you sure? In all seriousness, Remedios is the most loathed character in the whole of Overlord due to a combination of factors. While some of these factors include her being a bad-tempered idiot in a position of power and her poor leadership skills, the main reason is her constantly awful treatment of the most beloved character, which is of course Nea Baraja. That, and it's kind of a joke to hate on her. Personality aside, Remedios is a strong warrior who sits in the realm of heroes even without her sword. She is the leader of the Holy Kingdom's Paladin Order and is estimated to sit anywhere from levels 31 to 35. As the strongest paladin in the kingdom, she is suited to melee combat while also being able to cast spells. These spells are particularly effective against those who have a negative karma rating. The main one is Holy Strike which causes a channel divine power to explode on contact with an enemy and is held by every paladin. A skill more exclusive to her specifically comes from her job class of Evil Slayer and it intensifies the divine power within her sword. As for her other job classes, they are Holy Knight and Paladin. Her Paladin job class, however, has the augmentation of genius. This means she has a natural born talent for that class, and that it differs in some way from the standard variant. Another boon going for Remedios is that her physical strength is above average for a human, but her most defining feature is her sword. Remedios' sword goes by the name of Saphalesia, and is one of the Holy Kingdom's four holy swords. The Holy Swords exist as a counterpart to the Black Knight Sword of Darkness. 
the most famous Sword of Darkness being Killer Nyrum that is wielded by Lacus of Blue Rose. Returning to Sapphalesia, it is made of a metal stronger than adamantite and is capable of emitting divine power on its own. It can also produce a small limited amount of holy magic, and as such is substantially more effective against enemies with a negative karma rating. The sword's ace move is a stronger version of a paladin's holy strike and can only be used once a day. The holy wave causes the blade to glow a divine radiance and a light extends out of it twice the blade's actual length. The attack ignores defences and armour and cannot be blocked by weapons or shields either. Like other holy attacks, its effectiveness is determined by the karma rating of the opponent, dealing practically no damage to those with high karma ratings. The brightness of the light produced is also more intense the more evil the foe is. Combine this with the martial arts of flow acceleration, strong strike and fortress to raise one's defence and we see why Remedios is the Holy Queen's personal bodyguard. In fact, she is so strong that she holds the title of White of the Nine Colours, a title only given to the strongest warriors in the Robal Holy Kingdom. Despite all this, the human members of Black Scripture are all in the realm of heroes, with the strongest being around level 40. They may not have a holy sword, but they do have equipment from Yggdrasil, which puts the majority of Black Scripture between Remedios and Brain Unglaus in terms of power. Speaking of Brain, let's see what makes him stronger than most of Black Scripture. Brain was originally weaker than Gazeth, being cocky, arrogant and overconfident in his capabilities. But after being ridiculed by Shaltir, he realised the futility of his own power and really started pushing himself. Before long, he had clipped Shaltir's nails, learnt sixfold flash of light, and even fought Kokaitis. During the fight with Kokaitis, Kokaitis estimated Brain's level to be around level 40, which pushes him into the realm of heroes and thereby surpassing Gazeth. It's also worth noting that this was despite Brain using his regular, unenchanted katana, while Gazif wielded Razor's Edge, making Brain's achievement even more impressive. As for Brain's job classes, they consisted of Sword Master, Sword Saint, and a genius variant of Fighter. The gimmick that came with Brain's innate talent was the fact that he could further increase his focus capacity. This allowed him to exceed his levels by 10 when activating True Nail Clipper. This is the attack he used on Kokaitis, and we could see that during the fight his body was on the point of breaking, as it couldn't handle all of Brain's power. To understand true Nail Clipper, we can first look at the regular version of Nail Clipper. Nail Clipper is the result from the union of the martial arts skills Field, God Flash and Fourfold Flash of Light. Field was created by Brain himself and allows him to perceive everything in a 3 meter radius, thereby increasing his accuracy and evasion. God Flash is a strike so fast that when cutting through an opponent, blood won't stick to the blade. And finally, Fourfold Slash of Light allows the user to slash the opponent four times in a single swing of their sword. True Nail Clipper is the same as regular Nail Clipper, but with Sixfold Slash of Light instead of Fourfold. It was after Gaz's passing that we see Brain training with Vesture, and under his tutelage, he managed to learn Sixfold Slash of Light. A variation of Nail Clipper also exists without any Fold of Light in it, and is simply a combination of Field and God Flash. The strike goes by the name Wind of the Great Forest, and is named after the sound of blood spurting shortly after severing a neck. The rest of his kit comprises of a series of self-explanatory attacks such as Vertical Strike and Heavy Blow, the Martial Art Fortress to offset an enemy attack, as well as Ability Boost and Greater Ability Boost. Speaking of boosts, the potion we see Brain drink before engaging with Kokaitis are potions of lesser strength, lesser dexterity, and magic weapon. On the subject of magic, let's take a look at the next human on the list, Fluda. Fluda is the strongest known human magic caster due to his ability to use 6th tier arcane magic. Given his fame as the strongest human magic caster, it should come as no surprise that 6th tier magic is known to be the highest tier that a human has ever obtained. Furthermore, Fluda is famous for being able to use three types of magic, which on top of Arcane, are Divine and Spiritual Magic. He is estimated to be around levels 38 to 40, putting him lower than Regret. His job classes include Wizard and Bishop, and he is the only known being to have the job class of Forbidden Arts user. 
Another thing that sets Fluder apart is his innate talent to see the magic aura of casters, which allows him to both determine their power and what tier of magic they are capable of using. As for magic we know him to possess, most are common spells such as fireball, fly and teleportation. One that does stand out however is a spell called obey. Obey is a modified version of summon undead 6th tier that Fluda made himself and allows him to control low rank undead. One of Fluda's disciples even notes that Fluda can imbue a magical surveillance field around an entire area such as a village. The final thing that Fluda can do is extend his own life with magic, and this is something that Regret can also do. While Fluda is a truly impressive magic caster for a human, he is still not the most impressive human in the world, as he is still outclassed by the 10th seat of the Black Scripture and Regret Bears Corral. Starting with Regret, Regret was one of the 13 heroes and the original leader of Blue Rose, where she acted as a supportive magic caster. While Fluda is said to be the strongest magic caster, Regret can still cast 5th tier magic. While we know Regret is able to cast 5th tier magic, we also know she spent a lot of time in seclusion to work on improving her magic after the 13 heroes disbanded. As such, it is more than possible she can actually cast 6th tier magic, putting her on par with Fluda in terms of magical strength as well. Estimates put Regret around level 45. This is only a guess, but using the author's tweet regarding world level ranks, we know she is just under Goblin Strategist, who themselves sit above level 43, and this puts Regret anywhere from levels 40 to 50. Another thing that sets Regret ahead of Fluda is how she used to own the ring from the Platinum Dragon Lord that can temporarily boost a warrior's stats and abilities. It was created using wild magic and can even push Kokitus beyond the limits of level 100. Platinum Dragon Lord has also stated how Regret is one of the few humans on par with the level 50 vampire Evil Eye. In terms of her swordsmanship, we know that she once fought with Brain and the battle came to a painful draw. That said, this would have been before Brain encountered Shoutir, and as such, would have been a weaker version of the Brain we saw at the end of Season 4. What sets Regret above Brain though, is that she is a jack of all trades in both magic and swordsmanship while being a master at both. So even though Brain is the superior swordsman now, Regret still comes out ahead due to her flexibility. While we have a rough idea of where she stands in terms of her magic and swordsmanship, we don't know much about the specifics of her capabilities. One other thing that we do know about her though, is that she has levels in necromancy. Through this necromancy, she can control the undead, although we don't know what level of undead she can control up to. Returning to the 10th seat of the Black Scripture, he is known to be the strongest human. Not much is known about him other than the fact he is an axe-wielding barbarian. And that wraps up pretty much everything. If you enjoyed, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it really helps out the channel. Thank you ever so much for all the insane support and allowing us to hit 1k subscribers so quickly as it is an absolute honour to be making content for you all. And with all that said, thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed.